Thank you, everyone. Um, well, good morning. Welcome to Perk Up Thursday at the ICC Entrepreneurship Center Focus Suites. Today, our spotlight speaker is Ted Eshelman. And um, sounds like from the conversation that you have a lot to share with us about your entrepreneurial and business journey. So I'll turn the floor over to you. Well, thank you, Brooke. Appreciate the opportunity um, to come and talk. A um, little bit about me before I talk about why I'm here. I was, uh, in 1980, I graduated from the University of Nebraska with a degree in music education, thinking I was going to be a band director. That was going to be my career path. Um, life kind of took me a different direction, though, because in 1980, there weren't that many jobs. And I ended up, uh, for teachers, I should say, uh, I ended up getting towards the end of summer without a job. And I thought, I got to get do something here. So I walked into Deets Music uh, thinking uh, with my resume thinking I could get a, sell clarinet reeds and guitar strings or something like that just to kind of get by until I got a real job and uh, uh, they hired me from, and 40 years later <laughs> Uh, I, I moved from my temporary job, so I was part owner, worked my way up, was part owner for about half of that period of time, um, and sold my shares back in 2019, got my real estate license. Um, my motivation there, I, at the time I was getting, kind of, it was kind of stagnant for me. We'd seen some pretty significant growth from 1980 to 2019. Uh, I think our gross sales were like 600,000 a year uh, annually with the one location. We grew to four locations, and by the time I left, we're up to like seven million in gross sales. So it was a pretty nice, nice business to be part of. And uh, for those of you that know Dietz Music, it's going to be 100 years old next year. Oh, okay. So it was, wow, that's, it's pretty amazing. And to be part of that, I'm I'm very, very, very proud of that. Um, one, the other reason why I changed careers is my wife, Robin Eshleman, you might be familiar with her, former city council person, Go Lincoln radio show, Lincoln's longest uh, commercial development radio show, uh, 15 years. Um, she needed help and uh, in her business, Eshelman Commercial Real Estate. So it made sense for me to get my real estate license um, to work for her to be the retail guy to help with commercial retail uh, leasing. Well, 2020, does that ring a bell? <laughs> in March of 20, my third month, uh, you know, pandemic hit, and it was like, I don't know if I'm going to be leasing a whole lot of retail space, you know, with everything kind of shut down for a while. You know, I mean, the good news is since then, it's kind of, it, it's recovered f for retail. Office is a whole nother story. But I had to go out and learn a bunch of new things about uh, like three phase electric and clear span industrial space and all this kind of stuff. Just if, if you're not aware, commercial is divided into a few different segments. There's retail, there's uh, kind of retail service or medical, there's office and some of these all can combine and then there's industrial and then land is kind of another category unto itself. I specialize or I should say we specialize in commercial stuff. We don't do residential stuff. We don't sell houses. Um, that's just something um, we choose not to, to to do because it takes a different type of expertise and we kind of feel like when the residential agents try to do the commercial stuff it's like you know you stay in your lane <laughs> it's a whole different complication i don't know if it's necessarily harder but it's just there's just a lot more involved in that so that's what we do is as far as commercial one of the reasons why I, I wanted to, to, I should also point out that I came here two weeks ago and bumped into Shannon <laughs> when she spoke here and did a marvelous job. Uh, we kind of go back, <laughs> she pointed me out too. Uh, I used to sing in her mom's cat's Christian rock band. <laughs> so I was a keyboardist for that. And so if you can imagine, cat with a microphone, you know, that's, that's, that's her. Uh, that was, and then Shannon was this, uh, scrawny teenager <laughs> at the time and and so it was you know when I walked in here and I saw her I went wait a second that's Shannon so that was kind of, was kind of exciting for me um, you know back to my story the uh, I my phone takes all the incoming stuff you the, the phone number we have plastered throughout the city on our signs comes to me um, Robin being the senior broker and all this kind of stuff she's got bigger fish to fry than just anybody who just calls so I'm kind of the filter I get a lot of calls from p startups or people with dreams um, my classic example of that is a guy who called up and said I had a dream last Saturday that I owned a bakery <laughs> 
okay? And your space on 27th, North 27th and Holdridge, how much is that to, to lease? You know, as well, it's uh, 1500 a month. Okay, can I come see it? I said, but what, hang on, back up here, back up here. Um, and I get a lot of calls like that. And we kind of have this dark humor about those calls. We kind of say that our, our job is to crush dreams. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of sad, but it's, but actually, no, no uh, in all seriousness, what we do with, with people like that, uh, we don't want to waste their time. I certainly don't want to waste my time. Um, we f send them here. We say, you know, you need to get a mentor. You need to get uh, a business plan, a formal business plan. And if you don't know what that is, you better learn because because you're going to have expenses in the future and you're going to have things that are going to be more than just your lease. And this is part of the mindset that's hard to deal with. They're thinking, okay, it's $1,500 a month. Let's see, I can probably, I know I can cover the first three months. <laughs> you know, and that's like, well, have you thought about utilities? Have you thought about your inventory? Have you thought about help when you want to take time off? Have you thought about marketing? Have you thought about moving? All this stuff. Um, building, construction, all this kind of stuff. There's just a lot involved in that. And it's like, oh, it blow my mind. Well, you need to do that. And the reason why is a landlord doesn't want you if you aren't prepared to do that. So I'm sorry, from Midwest Bank, I didn't get your first name. Kim, I'm gonna be your best friend right now. Because the first thing we do is we recommend Kim, or we recommend a banker. A good relationship with a banker is not only shows you have money, but it shows you've got somebody there to second guess you and to say, here's what's wrong with your plan. You might wanna do this instead, course correction. So my wife, Robin, that's her favorite question to ask anybody that we suspect is a startup, is to say, who's your banker? Who's your commercial? Do you have a, you know, they'll, they'll say, well, I have a checking account or I have maybe even a line of credit, but it's like, you need that mentoring, right? Am I right? Yes, thank you. That, uh, it's, it's a good thing to have uh, set up. A business plan, a formal business plan, and I'm, I'm talking more in terms of startups. If you have a business going and you're wanting to lease a space, you can demonstrate with your P&L statements, profit and loss, you can demonstrate a history, you know, and if, especially if you've been paying another landlord money, there's history there. That's not as hard to get you set up in a commercial lease. Um, and I mentioned the whole long-term thing, and not, you're not, you can't think in terms of just three months, you need to think in terms of two years, three years, preferably five or seven years in your plan, and you need to have all these things kind of mapped out. What's it's gonna cost to do this? How much money am I going to make to cover that? And you, it's no secret that a lot of business people, when they start out, don't make money those first couple of years. Maybe they have a part-time job or a spouse that's supporting them. That's not unusual, but still, there's that commitment. When you sign a 60-month lease, you are signing for payments for 60 months. And whether the business is working or not working, you are legally obligated to do that. So that's something that a landlord takes very seriously. And the last thing landlords like to do is to have to kick you out for, for not, not paying. And, and uh, so they are gonna be real picky about that. Um, and I know it's kind of a turnoff when we tell new people that this is what we expect out of you. And we, we kind of put the monkey on the back of the landlord. Say, well, landlord's gonna want this. And actually it's, I don't even wanna show a space unless I know you have your game plan. Cause it's, it's, it's not only a waste of their time, it's a waste of my time too. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what, a, what uh, is involved in a, in a commercial lease. And if you have any questions, you know, throw your hands up. Um, happy to, to do that. Um, I mentioned the whole liability of that commitment. You know, you are you're committed to do that. But there, are, there's uh, when you're out leasing from a landlord, a lot of times a landlord will have a commercial agent that, that lists that property and advertises it. We have multiple listing services. We have, I don't know, a dozen or so listings that we do where we try to bring people in. When we bring people in and show space, our job as the listing agent is to represent the landlord. We look out for the landlord's best interest. We make sure the landlord gets the best possible deal. And the tenant is on their own, unless, they have what's called a tenant representative. And you may not know this, but you can have a tenant representative go with you that doesn't cost you any money 
because what happens is when a deal is done, that tenant representative will look at that lease and go, oh, no, 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 that holdover clause, that's too much money. We want 150 percent, we want 115 percent, or there, there's some negotiation that goes on. That tenant rep is looking out for that tenant's needs. So you have the two forces, landlord, tenant, lessor, lessee, you have them looking out for each other's needs. And then through that process of negotiation, you can come up with a good, agreeable lease that works for both parties. Now I said the tenant reps don't usually get paid by the tenant. That's because the listing agent collects a commission and shares that. So you literally go out there with that agent. Um, they can do searching. Um, they can find a space, they can negotiate on your behalf, and you don't pay anything for that. So we always like to encourage that resource. Again, you, you get the, and some of these terms I'm gonna to start to talk about in terms of, uh, um, oh, I'll throw out things like uh, escalation, um, uh, holdover clauses, um, early buyouts, all this kind of, these are things that most people don't know about, but we do. And that's something that we can help you with if we're representing you. And we'll look at that lease and we'll find things that maybe are a little more palatable. You know, some of them you can't change, but some there will. You'll find out things like uh, in some leases, the, uh, the, the tenant is responsible for, for the heater, for the air conditioning, for anything goes wrong, the toilet gets plugged up, that's the tenant who has to do that, unless you've got something negotiated differently from day one. So these are all little, I don't wanna call them loopholes, but they're details, let's call them details, that are in a lease that, that you wanna kinda know in advance what you're responsible for. We can help you there. Um, when you pay or when you're looking for, first of all, I should say, if you're looking for a space, we, on our website, we have, we, we hook into a multiple listing service that you can look at not only our listings, but other agents' listings, and you can look at the prices and get an idea. You can narrow it down by, by where, by region, by cost per square foot, that sort of thing. Um, that's something you can do, uh, and you can kind of do some general searching there. If you go to our, our, our website, ecrproperty.com, I've got business cards if you want to uh, do that. But that's, that's something you can use as a resource, too. Um, there are things about the way things are priced that kind of throw people off. There's two kinds, well, a variation of two kinds. There's what's called triple net. Has anybody ever heard of triple net leasing? Okay, good, 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 good. All right. So, and if you don't, don't feel bad because I didn't. As a retailer, my, my accountant hand, handled most of that kind of stuff. And so um, this was, I was kind of late learning what triple nets are. Landlords have the expense of their property, they may have a mortgage, but they also have property taxes to pay for, they have common area maintenance, all the landscaping, the snow removal and all this kind of stuff, and insurance on the structure itself. Not the contents, the tenant has their own insurance for that and liability insurance, that sort of thing. But uh, I'm go to our insurance agent for, for more details about that. But um, that's, a, that's a real expense. And some landlords, actually the majority of the landlords, will do what they call triple net. Three things, taxes, insurance, common area maintenance. They will do as a charge in addition to the base rent. They'll advertise $12 a square foot. And they'll say, <coughs> 340 triple net. So, you know, so it's like, and, and I, I always, for me, it was like, I almost thought it was a hidden, <laughs> I almost thought it was a hidden charge, but it's like, no, actually in, in, in the bigger picture, if you're aware of it, it's more transparent to know what those charges are. Because a landlord needs that money. A landlord has to have that to, to be a landlord, <laughs> to own the property. But if it's triple net, it's transparent because what happens is, that all those expenses are added up to an additional expense that will f float as inflation effect impacts um, labor or as property values go up, impacts the property tax, or as <coughs> insurance goes up. Uh, and we've seen some pretty crazy insurance <laughs> increases this last couple of years because of hail and all that kind of stuff that's been going on. So it's kind of justified. But um, what happens is all those expenses are tallied up for the whole year, um, divided up by the amount of space that you have in the, let's say you have 20%, let's say you're in a strip center, and you have 20% of the square footage of that total, then you'll be paying 20% of those triple nets. That triple net is divided out into a monthly payment, I'm sorry if this is getting too complex, but then that's added to the base rent. 
And if, if, if this got by, you don't worry about it. This is the stuff a, a tenant representative can, can walk you through and make sure you know that. Are, are CAMs considered part of the triple net or is that a separate? It's a very good question because there are even some real estate agents that get the word CAM mixed up with triple nets and they think it's all the same thing. CAM starts for common area maintenance and that's generally included in the triple nets. That's generally part of that. You, we don't usually see utilities included in that. Um, that's usually another charge that you should be aware of as you're doing your business plan. But yeah, that's usually part of it. And CAMs can be um, snow removal, lawn, uh, landscaping, um, the lighting area for the common area, or if you have common bathrooms, maintaining those, you know, anything like that. There's one thing, and there's a thing called pass-through charges. If you have um, uh, a landlord that really likes, likes a, night, a nice office property and wants to change the artwork in there once in a while, um, to improve, to make, the, that's kind of arguable if that's something the tenant should be paying. And, but sometimes they'll sneak that in there. And so that's why the whole concept of pass-throughs is when you do, you, you want to make sure in your lease you have the ability to audit what those expenses are. And you can go as detailed as you want, but if it's in your lease, it's, the landlord is obligated to tell you what all that money. And I say this is transparent because what happens is if a landlord doesn't do it a triple net, they're going to get that money no matter what, and they're going to estimate high. So we have what's called a modified gross rate, and that's another way of doing it. If you're searching, make sure you understand if it's triple net or modified gross, or even gross. Um, because they can, they can hide things. Like I say, they're, gonna, they're never going to estimate low. <laughs> so I, I don't think triple net is necessarily bad. The, we find it hard on nonprofit organizations that need to be able to budget, well, I only have $1,100 a month to go, and you, you know, you're going to rent. So um, again, getting back to the whole negotiation thing, we had a couple of nonprofits this last two years that, that they just could not do a triple net. They needed to know what their budget was going to be, and every time it changed, they had to have a director's meeting and all this kind of stuff, and so it, eh. <laughs> um, we can work with some landlords, and the landlord was like, okay, you know, I will estimate high, but, you know, if it, and then they tenant said, I don't care. <laughs> I just can't do a triple net lease. So there, there is some flexibility in there. Um, go ahead. Real quick, Ted. So I'm going to use the, the, the twin buildings up here on the street, uh, like 8,000. Oh, the legacy? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when you walk in those buildings, uh, there's one, they have the really nice marble floors which have to be cleaned and maintained. Yep. That is part of the camp cost. Uh -huh. But when you look at, when you walk in there, uh, both buildings have this like large glass, like uh, almost uh, uh, display area. Yeah. Uh, one of them has a bicycle. A bicycle, yeah. 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 So that, the, that displays would be considered a pass through. Yeah, if, so if he's going to change the bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. The display and that yeah. Would be considered a pass yeah. But the actual maintenance of the marble itself is going to be considered a can. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, and that's handled through the property management company that that bills them and and uh, thus bills you. I'm not sure if if they're triple net or how that is because that's a, it's a little different different environment and I should I'll I, ask next time I go to the doctor's office. Yeah. <laughs> or my account or my uh, financial planners there too. So, yeah, Roger Franks. Um, it's a good question. Um, other terms that might pop up, I got it here in my notes, holdover clause. Um, what a holdover clause is if, if the lease is about to be up, and let's say you're planning on moving, but you're to a new space, but maybe your space isn't ready and you need to stay another month or two or three or whatever, um, landlords will have a certain percentage. When this lease is over, if you need to stay there, we're going to charge you 150% of what your current rent is each month to stay there. Now, if you're, if you're stuck, you know, that it's probably worth it to do that. That's something we try to negotiate down. If I uh, think 150%, we try to get it down to 110, and then you usually fall somewhere in the middle at 125. But then, again, that's something your, your uh, representative needs to look out for you um, on the uh, 
holdover clause, pass-throughs I mentioned, CAM charges, renewal options. Um, a lot of times you'll build into the lease, okay, it expires in five years, but you have the option to continue for another five years with a 60-day notice or 120-day notice. These are things, you know, options are good and bad. They're good in that you, can, for continuity's sake, it's, it's kind of nice to be able to know that you can still continue in that space and you have the option of doing that. Um, a lot of times it'll set a rate um, or base it on the cost of living, that sort of thing. But it is kind of nice to think in advance what happens when this lease is over. On the other hand, if you think you're going to explode and grow and, and, and do all kinds of marvelous things and need more space, you may not want to be in that same space or you may want a, another to expand out in there. So, so that, that, that brings up a good point. Um, we recently, we'll, we'll pick on True North, mm -hmm. uh, they, they had what, four or five spaces here at one time because they grew. Yeah. So what would happen if they were in an, uh, a retail, an actual retail space and they grew out of that space and say, say they're on a five year lease, they grew uh -huh. out of that space in three years. Mm -hmm. Is there a way for them to be able to get out of that lease or they? Technically, no. Um, if if the landlord has another tenant that's interested in the spot, or if they want, the, the other thing is they have to sublease their space. They have to find another tenant to continue. We actually have two subleases right now with offices that they're running into some budget problems and they're having to cut their space in half. But they're obligated for another five years. So. Um, yeah, that's why it's important to understand that when you sign that contract, you are committing to that period of time. Now, there may be something where it's advantageous to the landlord to either move you out, or if you're talking about an expansion, certainly you can, you know, if, if it works in the landlord's favor. But that landlord, landlord, is not evil. Landlord just has bills to pay. Landlord has a mortgage, and 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 so it's you know, landlord is planning on having your money for the next five years or whatever is left on there. So, yeah, it's. It's tough. We did have, we had one client that had to move out, had to break, they had 12 more months left on their lease, and they just said, we just don't need the space anymore. Well, they negotiated with the landlord to just buy it out. We'll pay the next six months and leave in six months. Landlord was like, you know, they're struggling. <laughs> it's probably better for me to have the next six months to find the next tenant. Yep. So there are ways of negotiating that. Uh, but generally, you know, you sign that contract, that's what you're stuck with. And, and they have the ability to sue for that amount too. You know, and you'll, you'll read cases where these major retailers and, uh, decide to vacate and then they're, they're, the lawsuits are going on. I just, ugh, <laughs> ugly. <laughs> Don't know anything about that, but yeah, that uh, that that is something to kind of think about. What what is your? I'm going to keep asking the question. Uh, what is your maximum size? I'm assuming you, like the old Sears location is now turning into a clothing. Store. Yeah, yeah. Is that something that larger than what you handle, or do you try to stick to the smaller? We we're not really equipped for anything that large. Um, I don't want to say never or, or no, but our, our specialty is more local too. Um, working with local business owners and especially in, in sales, working with, uh, our favorite thing is like if an owner is retiring and wants to get out, uh, we just sold a, an, an insurance place on North Cotner that uh, they, were, they were done with the building and they were, they were retired and so you know, we found a buyer for their space. But it's, that's, that was like, 3,000 square feet, um, 3,000 to maybe 10,000. That's about our soft spot uh, where where we want to be as so with our song. Leasers, as far as because you're talking leasing, Ooh, and either talking, yeah, either you know, acquisition, yeah, sales, yeah, either, either. Yeah, 10,000 square feet is pretty big unless you're talking industrial space. And yeah, we've we've done some leases that. So, if we can, can we pick on the old Dairy Queen? Okay. So that entire building itself is probably 30,000 square feet, maybe a little bit smaller. 30? Or is it not that big? I don't think it's that big. So 27,000. You, you, you have that divided up into like whatever it is, four or five foot bays. Is that the right word to use? Like sections? Or yeah. Divided up into, into multiple different sections. Is that, how, how do you determine the best use for a space like that? Okay, now I'm trying to think 27th and the whole, do you mean north, 27th, and? 
uh, be the southwest corner. South. There's a. It's like. I'm Houston thinking dairy, of the. Dairy, 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 dairy because there's a nail salon on the. Nail salon on the south end. Okay. Yeah. And then there's. And then the police station across the street from that on Holders. Across the street, yeah, to the north. It used to be a rent to own and that type of stuff in there too. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not that familiar. I can tell you more about the nail salon since that's our listing, but that's that one is um, 6,000 square feet and it's divided up into four units. Okay. okay. Um, and how you determine what's the best use <laughs> is like whatever fits with the with the tenants like for instance we had there was a CBD store there we didn't want another CBD store in there so that was kind of a no-brainer you got two segments that are nail salon the best use would probably be a beauty supply place or uh, uh, we did have a, a grocer looking at it but there's also two other grocers uh, in in the area uh, ethnic grocery grocery type stores and uh, whether that's overkill that's a judgment call I guess so um, but, but you have it clearly defined into four different sections, though. Mm -hmm. the, the one person doesn't come in and say, I want 5,000 square foot, and then you're stuck with trying to, to figure out how to divide up. It, there's there's no rules you know you can do, other than just it's just the, the, the economy of, of that was designed with four four meters, <laughs> four meters and, and, and plumbing for four, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, so that would kind of d dictate how it would be divided up. Uh, once in a while we get a question like, well, can I have one and a half spaces? And, and most of the time landlords aren't real, real keen on doing that. Uh, although you can take, I know like at Dietz, we ended up taking the back half of a space for our lesson studio because we didn't need that f frontage. We, we just needed some place where people could go in there. They come in the front door and then go around the back. So it was, our, our space was L-shaped. This is our Omaha store. Um, so yeah, the market kind of determines how it's, it's gonna, and then you got zoning laws too, like, um, uh, you know, if you're gonna have alcohol, you gotta work with the liquor commission on not being near a neighborhood or a church or a school and all that kind of stuff, so. Uh, let me see, where am I at with my notes here? I think I'm getting to the end of, of what I had to bring you, pass-throughs we talked about. How often are you having to modify people with that kind of stuff because of zoning? Do people have an understanding of that when they look at stuff? Okay, that's a good question in that in the initial stages, that's one of the first things we try to do is make sure before we get into a whole lot of negotiation, we have them check with the city, and, and <clears throat> I wouldn't say it's a cop-out. We, we like them to talk to the city because they're better at explaining what it is they're going to do. We're gonna do a daycare service, but it's for adults. You know, that'll have a different, uh, different set of uh, uh, needs. There'll be things like with childcare, you gotta be able to roll out your infants you know, if you have a bunch of infants, you have to roll them out on uh, a ground level. You got to have a ramp. It's got to be, uh, forget what you call that, where it's, where it's, is it, yeah, the grade or the, the entry, zero entry, you know, things like that. You got to have a certain number of fire exits. Fire departments, <laughs> fun to work with sometimes because, you know, obviously safety is important, but some of the things they require is like, really? <laughs> we had one school that they needed a certain way of getting their kids out and their way of doing this was to have a wall that went up four feet with the idea you could still throw the kid over the wall. It's like, what? <laughs> I don't know, I don't, I don't want to disparage the fire department because I, I believe in safety too. <laughs> so it's just a massive undertaking in a commercial space because you have to deal with the city. You have to yeah. deal with all kinds of stuff. Fire department and, and, and help yeah, yeah, yeah. And we so and people will kind of checklist them a little bit. Or? They do. We usually a lot of that's investigated. Um, we will encourage when we do tenant rep, we, we put in the lease. This is all contingent on city approval, all the codes and all this kind of stuff, because a lot of times they don't have the, the approval yet. We had a, a gun shop that, it was kind of a catch-22, and they needed an address before they could do the permit. <laughs> <laughs> How do you deal with that? So, you know, before they, yeah, so that was interesting. It ended up not being, I, I wasn't real wild about, <laughs> no, enough about that, but that, yeah. Yeah, it, it can be complex. 
Um, I kind of get into the end of what I had to, to bring you as far as um, uh, I just I would encourage you that you know, if nothing else I want to leave you with questions you know or, or, or knowing that you need to ask questions because we just mentioned you get three years into your five-year lease and you go well we're done <laughs> no you're not <laughs> no you're not <laughs> it's it's uh, um, it, it's a commitment and then and then yeah just just knowing what you're getting into and you know landlords they want to make money but they also want you to be successful too you know and and so you know it's it's a team it's a team effort and a lot of times it's a matter of both teams just getting an understanding and negotiating what it is that that works for them too um uh, well i have a question okay go ahead uh, do you have a favorite local restaurant or business that you like to shop at Favorite restaurants, we have a top three. We love um, over in the um, Catalyst. Catalyst, I'm trying to think of the Village Gardens there. Oh, yeah. That's one of my, I, I, I am guilty of liking uh, locally crafted IPAs. <laughs> and so I, it's, I like to go there. And I, patio the patio is to die for. So that's probably our probably number one, but we have a few other places. We also like um, the venue, and, and uh, I'm kind of a fan of Old Chicago, too, just oh, yeah. even though it's a chain. We try to frequent and support the, you know, when, during the pandemic, when we we're coming out of the pandemic, Robin and I would, would choose our Friday night restaurant, and it's like, okay, which business do we want to not fail? <laughs> it's like, man, I can't take that pressure. <laughs> don't, don't put that on me. <laughs> and so we always tried to frequent those. So, yeah, local is good excellent what keeps you parked up and motivated to do what you do well I was gonna say I had my third cup of coffee so that <laughs> <laughs> that certainly helps um, what when things work out and you find a place and you know I talk about busting dreams or crushing dreams the opposite where somebody has a dream and they're going to make it we had a hairstylist she's a ribbon cutting this last week up across from East Campus and you know when we were walking through that that shell of a place it actually was a cost cutters you know it was like kind of clinical industrial um, and it was it had been vacant for a long time she went in there and did just amazing decorating and there was we went to the ribbon cutting and we saw it was it was just lively and everybody was excited and she she had created her dream that when you see that happen it's just the charging station um, in Havelock that was a dumpy I should say this it was it was an insurance place and there was like a couple dozen insurance agents that worked out of there and it was the, the landlord was cheap <laughs> It was run down, and I thought, what, what's going to end up here? You know, and, and oddly enough, an electrician uh, from Omaha wanted a Lincoln office, so he came and bought the building, and he has a tiny little corner there that's his, and then a coffee shop is there now. And I thought it was ironic that it's called the charging station. <laughs> But if you've ever been in there, it is a wonderful place. It's, it's, it's nice. That makes me excited. That makes me feel like it's worth it to be a commercial realtor. Yeah. Yeah. Jody, did you have a question? I did. So you, your company does tenant rent. Uh -huh. right? Okay. Because I have had a few friends and they're like, okay, this is what I need. And it's like, okay, who do I know that I can connect them with to be able to help right. them get their dreams? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I should talk about that. We, we do have an opportunity called a, um, a, an agreement, a formal agreement. Um, um, Robin calls it a loyalty agreement. And I, I, I wish there was a better way. We do run into problems. Like I had somebody that, that called me and said, man, I just love working with you guys because you, you listen to me and all this. And, and when I was meeting with so-and-so broker last week and so-and-so and so-and-so, and, -so and, -so, and after he listed the fifth broker, I'm going, come on, you know, and I had spent a lot of time trying to find him a place and he ended up not using me. So um, we like to help with the search and we can save you a lot of steps. I mentioned triple nets, you know, it's like, well, it's $12 a square foot. So by my calculations, 2000, it's going to be 2000 a month. I said, oh, but wait, <laughs> 
there's more. The uh, triple nets, and uh, in this case, it wasn't printed, so I had to call the listing agents, eh, $5.40. Oh, so it's another 500 a month. Well, I mean, that's where we can kind of help and filter. And, and the other thing, too, is when you're just reading something on a computer screen, you don't know what the neighborhood is. You don't know, you know how visible it's like the, the legacy. We've taken a lot of people out to that. It's a wonderful office park, but I've had three people go through there and say, Where's my, where can I put my sign? You can't. It's it's an office building. It's it's uh, it's not designed for that sort of use where you have. We had an esthetician that ended up at uh, uh, Meadow Lane, and she's got a great little space there. She wanted visibility, and she right now she's next to Valentino's to go and uh, Rutabagas, and it's it's nice. But that legacy would not have worked for her in the same way. It would have been, she'd have to spend more money on advertising, for sure. So um, that's something we can help out, too, because we'll ask you questions like, how important is signage? You know, you don't, most people don't think about, well, yeah, insurance, you know, you, you kind of want that sign there. So people drive by and, and go, oh, you know, and, or maybe you don't need it. Maybe, like I mentioned, the lesson studios. Um, that's something where you get signed up, you're there forever, <laughs> you know, or as long as your child's taking lessons or you're taking lessons. So your destination, you don't want to pay for 48th and O Street, uh, you know, that can be like 30, $35 a square foot. You want to pay $12 a square foot because it's, you're a destination business. So that's something we can also help out with too and narrow that search down. We had an out of town uh, uh, photography company that does like school pictures and pictures for football t or sports, that sort of thing. Um, they were from Norfolk and Southern California. <laughs> and they were expanding into Lincoln. And so he gave me a list of like 24 places that he wanted to go to. And I'm going, no, 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 no. A lot, there's a lot of places downtown. And we said, we don't have anything against downtown, but you want to drive up, you want your parents to be able to come and drop kit. Uh, so, but I love old architecture. I said, yeah, well, <laughs> your, your, the, your customers aren't going to like it. So, so that's the sort of thing we can do to kind of help out with the, uh, just finding the right space to narrow the search down and save you a lot of steps, a lot of time. Any other questions or comments? Well, thank you so much for being here. Oh, yeah. Today. No, I appreciate the opportunity. Cause like I say, when we get the calls for startups, I feel bad because they need help. They do. And so I appreciate <laughs> you being here as, as a resource. And we even have a few sample forms to what a, what a business plan should look like. But that's, that can only do so much. They really need to get a mentor score or, or something like that to, to really get... Um, I should ask Kim, is there any more bank things that you'd like to throw in on this? That, Because I didn't talk at all about purchasing. <laughs> um, well, I'm not on the commercial real estate side of it, um, but you're exactly right. It's getting in touch with the bank, making a connection with a commercial real estate lender just to go through all of the things that you haven't possibly thought about. I thought of it. There you go. There you go. Yeah, just kind of really paint the picture for them, and they can also help guide the way in that process as well. So. And. And good advice that I got from an accountant was, you want to have a good relationship with a bank when business is going well. Mm -hmm. That's the best time to have a good relationship, because then when time, times aren't going as well, you know, it's like, okay, I know your history, I know there's something, and, and maybe we can do this to help out, or maybe we can do a tailor this loan in a different direction, or extend it, or whatever. Interest only, there's options out there that, that can maybe get you through those hard times. Cause they're going to be hard times. It just is. So are you on the Save Lincoln local site on Facebook? I think I, I'm not. Uh, okay. I, yeah. Every now and then, no, it's a site that you can save. Yeah, I think Robin probably follows it. Yeah, she's more into the Facebook stuff. Because uh, there'll be every now and then someone looking for commercial property. And that would be a great time to plug or we can help you or whatever. But yeah. those questions come up yeah. what, once a week, twice a week or yeah, something. Say, yeah, at least once a week. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question about Sure. So Yeah, I'm looking for commercial space for fill in the blank. Yeah. So no, that's good to know. That's good to know. Some there's there's some real challenging ones out there like auto repair. You know, that's that's a real tough one because the city's really and rightly so, they don't want people stacking 
broken down cars, you know, in certain areas. And so that's that's really hard to find. Restaurant space, you know, restaurant has changed so much in that the emphasis now isn't the big sit down, Golden Corral type thing. Uh, it's just a, kind of a dinosaur now. Um, Everybody wants a drive through. You know, you look at scooters. Scooters was like 10 years ahead of the game. For have a, just a drop in a box and a drive through. You know, and that's that's good money because, you know, they don't have a whole lot of overhead and they get people people like to spend a lot of money on coffee. <laughs> <laughs> coffee drinks. Do you have any uh, businesses that you'd love to see come to Lincoln? Oh my gosh. Back? Always always restaurants, you know, it's like we get calls for like uh, Oh, I'm trying to think. Um, there's, there, yeah, there's, there's. Well, <laughs> uh, the the waffle place. You know, I think Saint Saint Joe's is the closest Waffle House. <laughs> you know, I just we're guilty. Yeah, Waffle House. We'd love to have a Waffle House around here. I don't know. You know, it's breakfast. <laughs> And, you know, Cheesecake Factory, that sort of thing. And I know there's probably more modern versions of that, but yeah, we'd love to have that sort of thing. And, and that, that takes a connection that, uh, part of the problem is Lincoln is just not quite big enough, yeah. you know, and we try to pitch, well, you got Lincoln and Omaha, but really Lincoln and Omaha are two different communities. Mm -hmm. It's just, we're, we're different, not only in distance, but in just mentality. I met with an Omaha broker yesterday that was talking, we were showing a, a we've got a, a strip center for about $900,000. And we're, we talked the owner into, maybe we could split it up, it's two buildings. And that way there'd be an opportunity to buy two $500,000 $500, spaces. And the Omaha broker was like, that's crazy. N nobody's, anybody that's, you know, that's just, nobody's going to buy a 500. It's like, oh, you don't know Lincoln. <laughs> you don't know Lincoln. They, they're just, the, the market for that is, is scarce, and we, they would turn very quickly. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes you see like you go into the, uh, the city of Lincoln, like, like that. Do that do all businesses need that, or is that just a special for um, certain kind of businesses? Yeah. Every you know, if you're changing the business or changing it drastically, um, there are there's permits that need to happen, um, or if it's brand new construction, of course you need to have that before you can you can begin to do business. I know like when we opened, when Dietz opened the East store out in the Gateway Shops, um, <laughs> we had a grand opening all set up and, and we didn't quite have our permit. <laughs> the landlord was saying, okay, if uh, it, you don't wanna be telling anybody that you're open. <laughs> you know, we were still like selling little things. We're like a day away from getting it done, but that was not legal. <laughs> I hope a statute of limitations will keep us from getting in trouble. That was 10 years ago, but <laughs> but yeah, that. And speaking of occupancy, I should talk. I mean, the one thing that has really changed is is office space. I mean, there's this part of it is a pandemic. Probably a good share of it is a pandemic, where all of a sudden we've discovered you can do business remote. Some can do business remote, and you can't get them back in the farm. <laughs> you can't get them back, and so we have a lot of what we call shadow space in downtown. Downtown's it's it's tough. I mean, they can be 60% shadow space where it's they're paying their bill, but nobody's working there. Um, and they have that there. Uh, and you've seen the the fight that's going on with the state trying to get remote workers back, and and you know. You do need to be, for some business, you need to be in the office. But frankly, some you don't. I mean, I work the majority of my time in my, my home office. We have an office. Um, and I think Robin and I kind of separate. She likes to work in our office. I think probably more for marital harmony than anything. <laughs> but but uh, this, we, we, we have a joke about that. When people ask, what's it like working with your wife? You know, and, and her response is, well, I've got the knowledge. I've been doing this for three and a half decades, but they like him. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, um, with the occupancy of the offices, 
are we seeing prices go down because people are... Well, that's the crazy thing is it, it really can't go down. I mean, and landlords can be funny about that. They would rather have it vacant than put a long-term lease for something under what their mortgage is, is going to be. And, and sometimes the banks look at that kind of funny like, uh, well, you're advertising $12 a square foot, so that's how they value the building. It's like, well, but it's... <laughs> 40% vacant, you know, but you, you know, once you make that commitment, you know, you're going to be at that low rate. So I kind of, I kind of understand it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to do like, Right, yeah, it is, and that that's a future. Mm -hmm. and when you're when you're valuing an investor is valuing a property, you know there's two ways to do it. One is comparable sales. I didn't talk at all about sales, but uh, you know you can look at what the sales history's been. The better way uh, is what does it yield for, if it's a if it's an investment? And what does it yield for rent? And we have what we call capitalization rates or cap rates. Um, where you take that income again the triple net thing works better if you're calculating that because you strip all the stuff that's that's just not part of the operation and then the base rent is really where the profit is and what you do is you look at that rental rate and you you calculate what the year what the annual income is and divide that by a uh, well anyhow you come up with a certain percentage for what uh, what what that building is worth based on its its income, on its rental income. And again, if you have a lower rate, you're kind of stuck with that value. And, and if you have a vacancy, you can kind of fudge that a little bit, I guess. You can take it as a loss. Well, yeah. 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 Okay. Any more questions? Well, we invite you to come back next week. Bill will be our speaker on the 12th. Hey. And um, then the following week, we'll have Olga Martin with uh, Business Buildery. And our book club, start. our next book club starts next week. We're reading Automate Your Busy Work. So we'll meet on uh, Tuesday, September 10th, 17th, and 24th uh, from noon to 1 in the collaboration room, 324. Um, come you can listen to the conversation if you haven't read the chapters uh, bring your lunch bring a friend uh, and we'll uh, see how we can do less achieve more and save our brains for the big stuff <laughs> but that sounds good feel free to stick around um, ask Question. Yeah, again, <coughs> some of these things that I, I went over are on our website. We have a <coughs> ecrproperty.com. We've got a frequently asked questions menu. Boom. What is triple nets? I even had a little video that kind of goes through all these things. And so <coughs> that can help you. And when's Robin's um, radio show? Oh, yeah. Robin's radio show is Saturday, if there's not a Husker game, Saturday at noon. It's also available on podcasts. I, I listen to it on Apple Podcasts. Grow Lincoln. And then the radio is 1400, I don't know what the FM station is, it's KLIN, KLIN 1400, and then Thursday mornings they do a real quick 20 minute segment during drive time, like at 810, a little after 8 o'clock, she and, she and Dave Albers get grilled by Jack Mitchell, and, on, uh, and it's, it's fun, it's fun. They, uh, the most popular things are, what's the new restaurant, what's the new restaurant, what's the new restaurant? And she does a, a yearly tally and kind of keeps track of how many came, how many lost, and, and uh, okay, that's always fun. That <laughs> what's the new bookstore? Yes, yes, out at Meadow Lane, I yeah. Need, I'll tell you what, Ted, I, I need a space at 56 and Holdridge with a drive through window. Drive through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. I didn't even talk about that. About uh, the, the the. No, I, I need to open a coffee shop. Yeah, no. <laughs> the <clears throat> the problem too with drive throughs is the city likes deceleration lanes. They don't want to stack traffic up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of funny. There's a workaround. Some of the drive throughs, uh, the city wants to be able to stack, so they'll have two drive throughs set up, but they only use one of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that gives them the square footage to get through city code. Because <laughs> you need so many, so many, so much distance. Distance. So like you have 12 cars stacked up. I don't know if anybody's been at 29th and Pine Lake, the Starbucks there. I'm just... Uh, oh, yeah. <gasps> <laughs> how about, how about the, the, 
I, I live up on North 27th Street. So the, the, the Starbucks up there across from the Liberty First Credit Union. Uh, okay. I think what that cross street is. Um, but there's a Starbucks up there. And I would say, especially on Saturdays, almost all day long, there's people back up in street yeah wow and city doesn't like that city does not like that so they'll do everything they can to prevent it almost to an extreme so <laughs> if we go back to 56 and hold groups they just built that new runs of there and the drive through is actually on you have to go around yeah yeah completely around the yeah building. and that's why yeah okay. it's safer <clears throat> we have we have a land listing right now at the old fire department on 84th and South. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the, the, our buyer, or our seller, I should say, bought that. And the city says, oh, by the way, you got to build a 70-foot deceleration lane. Because, you know, that traffic just whips by 84th. Nobody drives 45. You know, that's like <laughs> Highway 84. <laughs> you know? yeah. And so... She found out that's going to run about three hundred thousand dollars to build that deceleration. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, again, it's uh, you can't argue with safety. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want people to be driving fifty miles an hour and then have to slow down for somebody that's turning. So, is that only if they modify? It was. It was. It was. The zoning was P for public because it was a fire station. She got it changed to H four. I think it's H four, which is a lot of uses. But in order to do that. Nobody can occupy it until that deceleration lane is Even if they leave the building as is, they don't provide any additional concrete. All they do is mow the yard and paint. Uh, they can't operate a business out of it. So they have to do that. That is insane. If somebody comes to you and says, uh, I want to do this and I want it done in a month, do you have a timeline that you tell people, like, let's think about it takes a week to look at the properties we have. It takes a month to yeah. get the you know forms filled out. For right, this. right, right, right. That's you a good question about? because it also works the other way. We had somebody, a company that was ready to go look at places. Their lease isn't up until August, and we're going. Oh. This was after we'd done all this research and found out <clears throat> you should be looking in probably three to six months in advance. That's, that's a good, that's kind of the sweet spot. <clears throat> there are ways around it, but yeah, you've got a week of searching, maybe three weeks of searching. You know, we've got some that are, there's a board of directors, that are, there's all kinds of different people, and it's like, well, I've got to sign, but a bunch of people have to sign off on it. And so you got that to factor in, then you've got the negotiation, even the lease negotiation, you know, if you want to get the best deal, you want to take some time to get it done. That can be two weeks or longer. Um, I've got, we've got one deal we've been working on, we started in April. And I think, fuck on wood here, I think we're going to get an agreement today. <laughs> but uh, that was, and then the, that's going to take another 18 months to finish. <laughs> what time do you have build out time as well? And build out, construction. Construction and, and not just, but even just remodeling. Carpet, you know, you, sometimes carpet can take you three weeks to schedule and, and paint, you know, painting contractors. Uh, that's, yeah, that can add to the timeline. It's a very good question. Yeah, so you want to allow for that time. I'd say, I mean, 30 days is really, really tight. It'd have to be pretty much turnkey. I've got an office space on 44th and O. Actually, in a, we, have, we have a little co-share offices that are kind of like, like here that we could give you the keys next week. But um, that's, you got to take it as it is. <laughs> If you want to do anything else inside, then, then uh, yeah. What kind of businesses are around that? You said you have, you have an office space. It's <coughs> 44th and O, <coughs> Crown Plaza. Crown we have an insurance. So where's that? Insurance, 44th and O. What do you have? You say Crown Plaza, north side, south side. Oh, right? it's next to Broadcast House. It's on the, oh, it's, okay. yeah. Across yeah, it used to be Unico. Mm -hmm. It used okay. to be Unico. <coughs> We've got like an insurance agent. We've got um, a lot of counselors, a lot of counselors. We've um, got an esthetician, um, one massage person. And then our office is in there. Then uh, a uh, Christian counseling group, Christian businessmen operate out of there. Um, that sort of thing. So we considered a professional building. I had somebody wanted to do hair braiding there. It's like, mm, not really a good fit. You know, it's just not a good fit. Yeah. Yeah. And nail salon. It's like, you can't. We can't deal with the smell. 
in a, in a tiny office with a 150 square foot office. It's just, that's, that's not gonna work. Oh, but I got, oh, I got all this ventilation stuff I can use. No. <laughs> when my wife comes out of a nail salon, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks everybody. Out of time. Yeah, thanks everybody for your questions. Yeah. Cupcakes was, in the back. Yeah, some cupcakes. Sorry, we had a little cupcake malfunction. I twisted the thing sideways, but Shannon was able to keep the red frosting separated from the white frosting. So thanks on that. <laughs> well, you're in the kitchenette. There's coffee too. I'll go check and make. Sure <laughs> we have right, well, thanks for coming. Oh yeah. Having with being 